Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of our iRacing NASCAR driver career mode here on the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we head to Iowa Speedway here, a unique track on the schedule. And we've gotten into this portion of the season now where we have a lot of unique races on the way, which I'll talk about here momentarily. But quickly, we have some updates on some of the lower series here now as we actually saw the number 51 truck go to the top step of the podium here uh, in the truck series from Dover. And here you have a quick update update on the Truck Series standings. Currently, it is Michael Mrutz over Jason Smith, Bradley Coe, Jonathan Ramos, and Carson Josevar leading the way there in the standings. On the Xfinity side of things, it was Josh Berry winning over Matt O'Brien and David Cornelius here at Talladega Super Speedway. And you're going to see that in the point standings here for the Xfinity Series, it is Matt O'Brien for JJ at the top of the board. Four points over Cornelius, eight points over Josh Berry. Josevar as well running for Xfinity points in the top five in Algaira as well. And Carson Josevar may be making a name for himself here in these lower series and maybe making himself a candidate to jump into the Cup Series next season when we move to these next-gen cars. But now to myself here in Iowa in Cup Series qualifying. It was a pretty competitive effort here in qualifying. We actually qualified in the ninth position, so things were already looking pretty good for myself and while well, Kyle Busch was looking great for him. Kyle Busch has been running away with the championship here in this mid part of the season and it's going to need to take some rough races to bring anybody into the mix. Joey Logano being his closest competitor here as we would get underway for the start here in Iowa for 100 laps around this D-shaped oval. And I was excited for this one. We had a good qualifying effort. The car felt pretty good overall. I can tell you what, I was actually surprised by my qualifying effort because in practice, I couldn't even run a top 20 lap time. So I was a little bit concerned coming into qualifying. So I didn't know exactly what to expect here in the race. But the car, like I said, overall felt good. So my confidence was certainly high. Now, and of course, a, a very important part of the season, that mid to now closing in on the three-quarter way of the season, season we have tracks that are going to be very unique coming up here today we have Iowa but in the next episode is probably the biggest curveball racetrack on the schedule and that is iRacing Super Speedway that is going to be insanity and uh, no doubt in my mind we're going to see multiple multiple crashes there and potentially some really large crashes so it's all about just avoiding chaos at I racing super speedway and Joey Logano that's going to be his best opportunity to of course get back in this championship mix with Kyle Busch uh, but then as well we have Hockenheim so we're going to our second or what third actually uh, international race I think it will be at this point uh, on the season and that's going to be a fun one as well as the second or third I can't remember exactly which one but either way it's an international race as you know the cup series here this season in this career mode are going to four international racetracks this season and Hockenheim one of my favorites in the world is where we head to after I racing super speedway and and then we still have Talladega coming up and we got a couple more international races with uh, Imola as well as Brazil. So there's a lot of tracks that are really going to throw some curveballs at the grid here um, throughout the remainder of this season. And that's really going to make things spicy. That's why, you know, it looks like Kyle Busch might be running away right now with the championship. But there's a lot of curveball races that could take him out of the championship very, very easily here. As you can see myself working my way through tra traffic here on lap 10. And I found that running this lane right here, right up towards the outside, you could build up a ton of momentum and if you could get to the outside of somebody on the exit of turn two they really would back out of the throttle and just kind of let you have it and I would go and pass at 98 here of Michael Cozy Jr. as well and we were quickly moving our way through the field now actually into a top five position here on the inside of that number 11 Jordan branded Denny Hamlin car next up was Ryan Blaney that we were trying to run down and actually we would continue though fighting with Hamlin here so he got to my outside and actually once he was on my outside I was struggling to complete the pass and you saw when I was on the outside it's easy to complete a pass but eventually we would be able to clear that at uh, number 11 and we would run down Ryan Blaney and do the same trick as I already talked about get to their outside and they really just kind of are forced to back out of it so we move up into third place already here in stage one but stage one was really short it was only 18 laps so we come through straight to this final lap of this first in opening stage trying to run down Chase Elliott here but Kyle Busch was leading the way down this back straightaway into turn three for the final time and he's going to continue to increase his point lead by picking up those bonus points for winning a stage second on down as you guys know gets nothing so Kyle Busch wins stage one Chase Elliott myself gonna be second and third as you see the rest of the field coming through to cross the line so I mean nonetheless you know starting P9 and we gained six spots it was looking pretty good but after only 18 laps nobody nobody came into the pits so that brought us right back to the grid here for the start of stage two by the time we come through to lap 22 uh, this stage relatively short as well both stage one and two pretty short here uh, as we're not even going to the end of lap 40 for this uh, second stage 
so the third and final stage is going to be a very lengthy one, which will require a green flag pit stop and, of course, uh, conserving some tires potentially as well, or at least not even having to conserve, but just being smart with our tires here. That's really going to be the big thing today, uh, as especially as the sun goes down here from Iowa. As you can see, now the sun is starting to set the track conditions. The temperatures change a little bit, but really wasn't affecting the handling of the car. The car felt pretty much the same the whole way through. As you see Joey Logano paying attention to him because he needs to get on the move. He knows Kyle Busch of once again gaining more points over Logano, who's second in the points. Logano needs to get a move on with it here, or someone else needs to step up to the plate. We've seen trends this season. I've talked about, I think, just about every episode here as you see the battles through the midfield on towards the back of the field, but we've had this trend where we have one driver kind of take over for a portion of the schedule here. Early on in the season, we saw Brandon Jones lighting it up, and then we had Joey Logano light it up. Then we had, um, as well, Kyle Busch go on his tear, but Kyle Busch has gone on a tear for a lot longer than anybody else. Quite a few wins this season already for Kyle Busch here. Now, as you can see, I was in defense mode now in lap 27 over Denny Hamlin. You can see him in my rear view mirror right there, putting a lot of pressure on the back of me, but fortunately, we would be able to hold him off, and he actually started to fall off after I held him off long enough, and now we were running down that number nine Mountain Dew Chevrolet Camaro of Chase Elliott, and I jump up to the outside to get that momentum rolling, and look at the difference it makes. We are going to just cruise on by that number nine of Chase Elliott here and move up into second place, and uh, I felt like I didn't really have anything for Kyle Busch. I kind of wore my tires out a little bit too much to go run down. That interstate battery's number 18 Toyota Camry, and we actually come straight through to the final lap of the stage. Only on lap 35, this stage was ending here, so like I said, remember, very uh, short first two stages here from Iowa Speedway now. As you can see, Kyle Busch is going to exit turn four. He's going to win stage two, but hey, we still had a really competitive stage of second place here, and I think we're a legitimate threat to win this race potentially here, but we've obviously been in position to win a few races this season as a Cup Series rookie, and we've thrown every single one away. Now, as we all come down into the pit lane for four tires, fill it up with fuel. I actually had a little bit of damage to repair on the right front there. I did clip the wall in stage two, so we did about uh, seven seconds of repairs. They got a majority of it there while they're putting the tires on, so I only had to stay stationary for about three or four seconds, but there you see Kyle Busch has a horrendous pit stop way off the pace. Kyle Busch would get going eventually, but he had lost several positions here, which was a huge opportunity for myself, and it takes the hit of repairing our car and losing some positions. Um, it, it's certainly less of a hit now because you can see Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano there out in front of us, but we are still uh, in the top 10, well inside the top 10 for this uh, potentially final restart of this race. It's been a calm night so far. Kevin Harvick up my inside there in that fifth position, his final Cup Series season, and same for Eric Amarola. Stuart Haas, of course, going through big changes in the end of the season here as they lose Kevin Harvick. They lose Eric Amarola. Then they're switching. They're completely rebranding with the next-gen car that's going to be coming into this career mode, and they're going to Audi. They're switching manufacturers, and the whole team name is going to be Stuart Haas Audi Racing here. So very excited to see how that team does. Got a long way to go. As you guys know, we're only doing like one episode per week right now, and that's simply because we're waiting. We're trying to stall it out and get to that next-gen AI, uh, and then finally we can actually get the ball rolling a little bit. But I don't want to crank out this season and then take a two-month hiatus or something because the next-gen AI isn't out. So that's why exactly uh, there's only been like one episode maximum per week because I want to make sure that once the season ends, we can take off right into the next season with the next-gen cars. But like I said, we don't even have a clue when that's coming to iRacing yet. Hopefully in the next season update whenever that comes here now as I'm all over the back of that 22. Joey Legato, we would clear his team at Ryan Blaney with a big momentum. And here we go on the inside of that Shell Pennzoil Ford Mustang, your 2018 Cup Series champion. Honestly, I'm a Legato fan right now because now I have to go run down Kyle Busch in the points. But here I am trying to pass Chase Elliott. But look at the outside again. Legato, he's in the position I wanted to be. He goes around me. He goes around Chase Elliott as well. So I'm going to jump back up to the outside, go higher than both of them here as we come through the center of three and four. Look at that momentum again. We're going to get right to the back of the 22 and even push him down this front straightaway here just to make sure both of us can get clear of Chase Elliott. Then we can go have our own little scrap right here in turns one and two. And sure enough, on the exit of two, here we go with that momentum. And we're going to pass the 22 sideways down the back straightaway. So we actually stay side by side as I had to, of course, collect myself, keep calm, cool, and collected. Bubba Wallace into the mix there behind us here, having a good run tonight in Iowa as well. But we're going to at least get clear of Logano on the exit of turn four and take the lead here with still 56 laps to go. Kyle Busch, he was on the move behind us as well. We were taken off. We would drive away from second place on back, but Kyle Busch, we were, of course, wondering what's going on with Kyle Busch because it felt like that was the car that was capable of beating me here in this third and final stage, but obviously we have quite an advantage. But I can tell you, like I said, the two-time Cup Series champion, Kyle Busch, on the move. Here he is going three wide through the middle. Showed us on the inside. Harvick on the outside. Now Larson, Bubba Wallace 
as well. He was already working his way towards the top five. Kyle Busch was on a move here in Iowa. And then he would work on his teammates of Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin, as well as actually we were also getting ready uh, pretty quickly in this third and final stage to get prepared for uh, some green flag pit stops. The question at that point was, though, is uh, where will Kyle Busch be when we cycle out? And same for Joey Logano. They're racing each other, like we said, for this championship lead. So that's something to keep in mind. But we come through to lap 68, a little bit over 30 laps to go in this race. And right now, here we are leading the way by six seconds. We had a six second lead over Joey Logano. I had driven away. We have never had a car like this. I mean, we didn't think we had a car capable of doing this based off of stage one, based off stage two, qualifying, practice, practice etc. And we would even run down lap traffic, start working on passing Ryan Newman. I think last time I raced around Ryan Newman, I, that was at uh, Phoenix when he was the lap down and next thing you know, I was head on into the outside while crashing on the final lap. Green flag pit stop. So would get underway. Logano would pit before me. I actually stayed out quite late compared to uh, a bunch of lead lap drivers. Daniel Suarez, my teammate, would get up to second but he was now on the pit lane as well. So I'm going to pit right here with 25 laps to go here. We got Stenhouse, Alfredo there. Or sorry, Gilliland. Alfredo's no longer on the grid, but there in front of us coming into the pits. I nearly ran into the back of the 47. That would have been pretty embarrassing and race ending likely there. But we come in for four tires, fill it up with fuel as well. No adjustments necessary. And we would still exit the pit lane and cycle through as the leader of this race with 24 laps remaining here in Iowa in position to get our first win of our Cup Series career in our rookie season. We've had a few rookie winners already of Sheldon Creed as well as Austin Centric. We're trying to be the third rookie winner of the season, which I don't know if we've ever seen that in NASCAR history. Correct me if I'm wrong. Kyle Busch now up into second place, though, and he was closing. 4.9 seconds a gap. Christopher Bell about 5.7 seconds back. So right now we were comfortably still leading the way with 15 laps to go. Kyle Busch, I don't think, had enough time to just run me down here. And he's closing now 13 laps. You can see I closed, or I actually pulled away by about four tenths of a second over Kyle Busch. Now uh, to about 5.3, and then I think it said like five. 5.6. Yes, it is. So we gained a few more tenths over Kyle Busch here with 13 laps to go, but the caution comes out here in Iowa, and it wasn't for a crash. It was for debris. NASCAR throwing, well, a phantom debris caution here when you get really long and spread out in a run, and they wanted some chaos at the end of this race. So we were leading to the final restart, potentially, of the night, which would get underway with seven laps to go, and that would put now myself in one of the fastest cars on track, Kyle Busch, on this front row side by side as we get ready to go green flag racing one more time here. And now I was not very happy, of course, with the yellow flag being called for that. Like I said, there was no accident. The caution gets called. We get back underway here in Iowa. Now it's uh, just crucial to stay ahead of Kyle Busch, but it's not going to matter. Here he goes up the outside into turn one, a big lunge into the corner, and he makes it work. He's ahead by three quarters of a car length as we exit turn two. Contact with the 18 briefly there and we fade down into second place behind Kyle Busch as we head down into turn three I'm a little bit aggressive here I'm pretty salty about what's happened I run into the back of the 18 twice we shove him out of the groove but I just can't get the power down enough there Kyle Busch about two car lengths ahead to three to four car lengths as we head down into turn one six laps to go in Iowa Speedway now as we are looking to of course win here in our rookie season and I was not going to let Kyle Busch steal the win from me at this point here I was going to wreck him if I needed to at this point here I jump up to the outside the last resort here four laps to go and now we get the ball rolling here. The momentum's on our side as we head down this back straight away. Look how close we get to that 18. We do it again here through three and four and the momentum continues to build on the exit of turn four. Coming to three laps to go here in Iowa and a big run to the inside of Kyle Busch. Side by side, not the preferred lane, but he had the outside occupied and we're side by side through the center of the corner. Pretty even. We hit that bump. We slide up into the side of the 18. A little bit more contact with Kyle Busch. He stays clear again. Coming to the final two laps of this race. Two to go down into turn one. I wait this time. I see the opportunity. We get to the outside here. We're going to have momentum on our side here as we come through the center and now exit of turn two side by side with Kyle Busch here and nearly clear down into turn three. He stays up the inside. He's got a nose there and now he's actually ahead coming to this final lap. It's crucial to be to the outside of that 18 and yes we are. He stalls out on the exit of the corner into the line. It's the white flag here in Iowa Speedway and we lead the way by about three quarters of a car length as we head down into turn one on this final lap. I am not losing this race I said and we're going to prove that here as we exit turn two with the momentum on our side. We clear Kyle Busch one more set of corners to go, and we take the defensive line through three and four. Didn't want to take any risks, and we're going to exit turn four for the first time 
in our Cup Series career, and we're going to be now a NASCAR Cup Series winner. What a journey it has been here from a big crash in Spa in Formula 3, and then we moved, of course, to America here in the United States to try and make a career in NASCAR after suffering a big injury, uh, and it has worked out in the Truck Series, coming up short of championships, of course, in Trucks and Xfinity, but winning races, giving ourselves an opportunity to have a debut with Trackhouse Racing alongside Daniel Suarez, and we bring Trackhouse Racing their first ever Cup Series win a part of the storyline before Daniel Suarez does, uh, and unbelievable, unbelievable, to say the least here now, as we finally are a winner in the NASCAR Cup Series. Obviously, it's too late in the season for us to really make a championship run unless things get really, really crazy with these crazy curveball races, which could happen, but there you do see the updated standings on your screen. We're up to sixth in the standings, 154 points out. Kyle Busch has a 72-point lead over Logano Hamlin, kind of clawing his way in too closer to Logano, so don't count how Hamlin either, but like I said, we got some curveball races on the way. This championship battle is by no means over. That's going to wrap it up for this uh, episode here. What an episode it ended up being. And in the next one, we head to iRacing Super Speedway. We go from a very high moment here with the wind to potentially a very low moment here if we get absolutely destroyed in iRacing Super Speedway. But that does it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching and have a great day.